union. Um, session members, you're asked to be on hand. Um, the following Sunday, we have homecoming. Um, invite somebody. It would be fantastic to have more than just our past members here and our present members. Um, anybody else got anything they need to add? All right, then. Let's get ready to worship. It's good to have Ed back with us this morning after his, uh, after his injury and his recovery is going well. Glad to see that. Let us pray. Gather us, O oh God, into the household of grace, the fold of your love. We recognize your holy presence and are turned toward a new day by the rising of the light of Christ. Help us to face this day and all of our days with the hope and promise made full for us in the person of Jesus Christ, as we unite ourselves with him once more and receive his heavenly word. For these and all our prayers, we lift to you in his name. Amen. Would you join me, please, in our call to worship? Open your hearts to God's loving mercy. Lord, come into our hearts this day. Having received God's mercy, bring that love to others. Lord, be with us as we reach out to others in compassion. Feel your spirits filled with the goodness of God. Lord, we thank you for the many blessings which you pour into our lives. Amen. Indeed, as summer turns into fall, we give God, thanks to God for the fruit of all creation. Let us sing together.
having followed the Israelites out of Egypt and through the Red Sea, we continue with them on their journey to the Promised Land in the 16th chapter of Exodus. Let us listen for God's word to us this day. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the morning and your fill or in the evening, and your fill of bread in the morning, Because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us sing together our hymn of worship. O Jesus, I have promised.
Please bow your heads. Most loving and merciful God, we come before you as your children asking for your forgiveness. We are here to worship, give thanks, and praise you as we humble ourselves before you. Father, we long to feel your presence and hear your voice. On our knees or with our faces raised to heaven, we ask for your help. We need your strength to live every hour in this world. We pray that the Holy Spirit will open our hearts and minds to the relationship that we long for with you. We are so thankful for the mercy and forgiveness that are ours for the asking, for the grace that keeps us in your light. Help us to love you so much that other things have no power over us. Help us to give ourselves over to your will and trust your truth and plan so that heaven on earth can be our reality. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> we come asking for your healing power for those here at Shiloh and with connections to Shiloh. We pray for Barbara and her family. We pray for Ed recovering from knee surgery, for Linda Dixon, for Bain after a heart attack, for Johnny Marley's family, Billy and Jim, for Mike after the revision of his dialysis catheter. We pray for those we name out loud and in our hearts. We continue to pray for Sammy and Ellen, Jerry, Jennifer, for our church, our pastor, our session, and each other. We pray for our children, friends, neighbors, teachers, administrators in schools. Keep them safe and help them teach truth and justice to their students. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the end of violence and conflict and for the hungry to be fed and the homeless to be sheltered. We pray for the families that have lost loved ones in death from earthquakes, floods, hurricanes, and other disasters. Send them help and comfort as they deal with their, their losses. You have asked us to let our light so shine that others will join us in following you. Help us become that new creation in you and have a new focus on life in Christ. Lead us to do your work within our community and with charity and understanding because we know that the life you gave us is precious. We are children of God and bearers of your word in this world. Help us gather and give what others need freely. Let us always be joyful and never stop praying and be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for those who, we, who belong to Jesus Christ. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit and for the love you have for your children. We pray for your continued blessing asking in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Join us now singing, Come, Labor On.
Here now a parable told to the disciples by uh, Jesus in the 20th chapter of the gospel according to Matthew. Let us listen for God's word to us this day. Jesus says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. This too, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may your spirit now rest upon us in this time of worship. Help me to speak your word, not my own. Help us to hear your word, not any other. So that we may go forth and live out your word in this world. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Don't let it be forgot. That once there was a spot for one brief shining moment that was known as Camelot. Indeed, Camelot has never been forgotten. As long as there are folks who enjoy reading stories of heroic adventure, knights on horseback, jousting, sword fights, King Arthur and his knights will be remembered. When I was a boy, they were right up my alley. There was the story of how Arthur pulled his sword Excalibur from the stone to become the rightful ruler of all England. There was the tale of Sir Percival and the others who searched for the Holy Grail, the cup that Christ drank from at the Last Supper. There were stories of conflict between Arthur and Merlin the magician and Arthur's sorceress sister, Morgan Le Fay and her nephew Mordred, many battles against the Anglo-Saxons, and of course the romantic triangle between Arthur, Queen Guinevere, and Lancelot portrayed a different kind of struggle. And there was Sir Gawain who fought the dreaded Green Knight. Perhaps though, the greatest triumph in all of Camelot was Arthur's slaying of another green-eyed monster. That green-eyed monster was around long before any knights or wizards. And long before King Arthur, 
Jesus told a parable about that monster so that all his disciples would be able to stand against it. In this parable, there is a landowner who needs workers for his vineyard. Early in the morning, he finds some laborers who will do the job for a denarius, which was the usual pay for a day's work. Then the landowner goes out three more times at 9 o'clock, noon, and 3 o'clock. Each time he finds more workers for his vineyard. and He sends them into the vineyard too and promises to compensate them adequately for their labor. Finally, it's almost quitting time. 5 o'clock in the afternoon and the landowner goes out yet again and finds yet more workers. When the time comes to hand out the paychecks, the landowner has all of the laborers line up according to the time they came to work in the vineyard. The ones who had just arrived at five are paid first. And they received the usual day's wage of one denarius. No doubt they were thrilled about this turn of events because they were the people no one else could use. For some reason, none of them had been hired until this one landowner came along. I don't know. Maybe they were considered too old to do the work. Maybe some of them were considered too young to be of any use out in the vineyard. Maybe some of them were considered too small or too disabled to work for anyone else. Perhaps we know what that feels like. Of course, no one is probably going to come right out and say that they have no use for you. But sometimes what they do say is close enough. Sorry, but your grades and your SAT scores just aren't good enough. Sorry, but we just can't accommodate someone with your disability. Sorry, but we were looking for someone a little bit younger. Sorry, but we were looking for someone with a little more experience. Sorry, but we were looking for someone more qualified. Sorry, but we just don't have a place for you right now. Well, if you've ever heard anything like that, then you know what good news it is when someone does have a place for you. Those five o'clock workers had to have been thrilled. And the first workers, they may have been just as excited. I mean, if the landowner was so generous as to pay the usual daily wage to these guys who worked only one hour, how much would he give to the ones who would work the full day in the sun and the heat? Well, the answer is that they also get only the usual daily wage. Their pay is the same as those who worked for one hour. And as you might imagine, they were not happy about it. They were not happy at all. They are envious because the landowner is generous. The old green-eyed monster of jealousy rears its ugly head. At its heart, envy is constantly comparing yourself to others and measuring yourself according to them. Envy always desires to climb ahead of its neighbors. You know, they've done research with animals, with monkeys. And they will train the monkeys to perform a task. And then once the monkey does the task, they'll give the monkey a slice of cucumber. And the monkey really loves that. The monkey just eats that cucumber and loves it, satisfied with it, content with it. Until they train other monkeys to do the task and start giving them a grape. And when those other monkeys start getting that grape, the monkeys that get the cucumber, they won't work anymore. (laughs) They'll throw the cucumber down at the researchers. They won't do it. It's only when they see what the other has that they get upset. 
monkey see, monkey do. Notice that the first laborers in this parable have no problem with the usual daily wage when they agree to work for the landowner. That's enough for them. That's plenty for them to live on. They grumble about it only when they see what the latecomers are getting. They are satisfied and content until the green-eyed monster of envy appears. Plenty wasn't enough for them. They wanted more. There can never be enough for the green-eyed monster. This morning we heard a reading from Exodus about how the Lord fed the Israelites in the wilderness with manna from heaven. And did you happen to catch the instructions that the Lord gave to Moses about how they were to gather the manna? The Lord would supply them with manna each day. And each day they were to gather as much as they needed for that day and no more. When some of them try to gather more and store it away for the next day, they find out that the manna spoils and becomes full of worms. We are invited to trust that God will provide us with our daily wages. The Lord will give us each day our daily bread. God will see to it that we have what we need. And if we have what we need, why seek more? If we have what we need, why worry so much about what others have? Why not be grateful instead? Otherwise, the green-eyed monster can wreak havoc. It can damage our relationships with others, but the main damage is done to our own hearts, minds, and souls. You may remember that one of the ten commandments in the Hebrew Scriptures warns us against envy. When the ten commandments teach us not to steal, it's mainly because stealing robs our neighbors. When the ten commandments teach us not to kill, it's mainly so that we will not harm our neighbors. When the Ten Commandments teach us not to covet, not to envy, I think it's mainly because envy robs us. When the Ten Commandments teach us not to covet, not to envy, I think it's mainly so that we will not do harm to ourselves. Theodore Roosevelt once said that comparison is the thief of joy. Comparison is the thief of joy. And I think that's exactly right. The more we compare ourselves to others, the more jealous we are of the gifts God has given them, the less we are able to rejoice in God's gifts to us. The more we envy their lives, the emptier our lives feel. The more we envy others, the more we are eaten up by unhappiness and anger. Once upon a time, there was an eagle who wanted to fly higher and faster and more gracefully than any other bird. But he knew that he couldn't because there was another eagle who could fly just as high, just as fast, and just as gracefully. One day, the first eagle spied a hunter with a bow and arrow. And the bird said, I wish you would bring down that other eagle up there. The hunter replied that he had always wanted to bag an eagle. I could do it, he said, if only I had feathers for my arrows. Well, if it's feathers you need, said that first bird, then feathers you shall have. And the bird plucked one feather out of his wing, and the hunter attached it to his arrow and shot up at the other eagle. However, the arrow did not reach that eagle. The envious eagle pulled out another feather and offered it to the hunter, but the hunter missed again. The eagle kept plucking out feathers and giving them to the hunter, and the hunter kept missing that other eagle. He never hit that eagle. In the end, though, the hunter was able to bag an eagle for himself. 
that first eagle plucked out so many feathers that he could no longer fly. So it was simple for the hunter to turn around, aim, and shoot that eagle dead. As an unknown author once wrote, envy slays itself by its own arrows. Isn't that oh so true? That's what happened to the first workers in Jesus' parable. Instead of celebrating the generosity of God, they sulked. They were so resentful of God's goodness to the latecomers that they ignored how good God had bidden to them. The green-eyed monster came along and killed their joy. The green-eyed monster plucked out every bit of gratitude until all that was left was grumbling. And when we measure ourselves against our neighbors, we only end up hurting ourselves. If we are all scrambling to get on top or ahead of each other, all of us end up getting trampled. And I think that King Arthur realized this. You see, before any other battle, before any other heroic adventures, he made sure to slay the green-eyed monster of envy. How did he do it? Well, in the center of Camelot, there was the meeting place for Arthur and his knights. You remember? The famous round table. The table was a perfect circle. There was no head of the table. There was no foot of the table. All the seats at the round table were equal. And Arthur decided to have this round table to remind his knights and to remind himself that all among them were equal. No one was above or below anyone else. Even the king took his place at that round table, just like everyone else. It seems to me that Arthur was taking a page out of Jesus' book. According to this parable that Jesus told, the first round table was the kingdom of heaven. From the perspective of heaven, from God's perspective, everyone is equal. God cares for each person no matter what their status is. And under God's reign, each and every one of us gets all that we need to live. God seeks to provide each and every one of us our daily wage. In the kingdom of heaven, the first shall be last and the last shall be first Because all are equal. All are equally loved. All are equally graced. And in the kingdom of heaven, the green-eyed monster is toothless. The green-eyed monster of envy has no power over us. So long as we know that we all sit together at God's round table. The green-eyed monster of envy cannot hurt us so long as we keep sight of how God provides for all of us each and every day, giving us all we need to live and thrive. The green-eyed monster of envy is slain, killed, by the gracious generosity of God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Please join me for the prayer of confession. You know how fickle we are, O oh Lord. We complain with us, and then we behave in ways which run counter from your word. We get caught up in our own needs and whine about the injustices we feel in our lives. Help us to place our trust in your mercy and your compassionate love. Forgive us when we stray from your ways and wander into paths of self-pity and self-destruction. Lift us from the deep morass and put us back on track. Give us confidence in your presence and your direction throughout our lives. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. For the assurance of pardon. Feel the comforting power of God's love and mercy in our lives. God is with us through all our experiences. Though we try, we cannot stray from God's love. Rejoice. This is the good news for all of us. Amen. Our next hymn is 625, All Who Love and Serve This City.
Let us pray. With hope in our hearts, we offer our gifts to you, O God, trusting that you will use them and use us in the work of your kingdom. Your kingdom which welcomes all, loves all, and serves all. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Friends, now as we leave this time in this place of worship, as we go, let us not pay so much attention to the denarius our neighbors receive that we forget to notice the good gifts that God has given to all of us. Let us not be envious and let the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the blessing and power of the Holy Spirit surround us and provide for us our daily wage. Amen. Thank you.